My name's Alec and I'm going to show you how to do some light milling on the drill press. So here's what you're going to need. Obviously a drill press. Uh, the second thing is you're going to need a vise. Um, an XY vise. So I recommend don't go out and buy the cheapest one in the world, which is what I did. I bought one from Harbor Freight. It's like 50 bucks and it's horrible and it's sloppy and it when you clamp it, it tilts at an angle. So just buy a good XY vise because I mean it's a really good tool to have and you might as well spend some money on it. So uh, the next thing, obviously you're going to need your piece of metal to cut and for today I just kind of marked out what, you know, kind of what the tangs look like um, that I'll be milling. I'm just kind of, you know, give you guys a demonstration. And the next thing you're going to need is some carbide tooling. Now, I bought this on Amazon. I'm sure there is way cheaper ways of getting it. Um, this is actually, I bought a replacement and I needed it fast, so that's why I went through Amazon. Um, this is from Kodiak Cutting Tools. Um, it's about $10. Um, and most of my knives are pretty thin, so eighth inch is, is what I need to use. And um, I started off using a two flute, and because of two flute, there's actually less material in the center, it broke right away. And I went with a cheaper one. And this one is a more expensive and a four flute. So get the four flute, spend the money because of all the slop that a drill press has, uh, you know, versus a mill, you need the extra stoutness. And get them as short as possible. Um, you know, as short as you can possibly be with getting away with with your cutting length. So, that's it. So once you get your vise on your table, make sure that it's clamped down real well. And what I've used is, and we can see behind the drill press there, is just like a clamping set. Uh, I think it was 30 bucks, and it gives you a bunch of way to clamp a lot of different things. So it's useful for more than just this. So um, you know, but you can use bolts, you can use clamps, you know, whatever. But as long as the drill press. Uh, the the vice sorry is is not going to move around in in relation to the table, um, you know that's important. Obviously, I haven't locked the table down yet, but uh, once I do that, it'll be pretty stout. Um, next part is gotta get something to raise the workpiece off the vice a little bit, obviously, so that you don't hit the vice. Um, I mean, they make. Uh, they make, I don't know what they're called, ride, they're like riser blocks, pretty much a riser, riser little pieces of metal um, for milling that they, you know, specially made for this. But, you know, I'm using two pieces of hardboard, which is working pretty well here. I said before, you want short as possible, as stubby as possible. And when you're putting it in your, your chuck, get it in there as high as you can, you know expose as little of the shaft as you possibly can and that'll reduce your chances of it breaking and it will break I mean you know using it in a setup like this it's going to break so now we got our bit chucked up our piece ready um, like I said you know I'm just using a piece of mild steel for this demo and kind of marked it out like it's a like I have a tang hole that I'm going to be milling in there. Um, and I have the speed set to, I think it's 1900 RPM. Um, and I'm sure for this, probably faster is better, but I've, this is the one I've been using uh, for doing this, and it, it seemed to work fine. So uh, now you can see it. So you can see just a little bit of time that I've already, come on, there we go. You can see in just a little bit of time 
that we've already milled away that center section and gone all the way up to the line just here. Now I'll finish it out. taking light passes and if it starts to chatter too much I just back off a little bit reduce the cut and go again So there you go. You can see how it uh you know it does take some time, but it does work. And in a pinch you can use a drill press for some light milling. So I feel like we should go over a few things and make something clear that this is no substitute for a mill. I mean, to be honest, it sucks. I mean, doing this, sitting here, and going super slow, and breaking bits, you know, it it's not that good of a system. I mean, it's a pretty crappy system. Um, if it's going, if this, using this is going to prevent you from buying a mill, uh, you know, don't do it. Just get a mill. A mill's way better. But, if you're like me, and you don't want to spend, you know, $500 on a mill that you're going to outgrow in, in six months, you know, and you want to save up a few thousand, you know, maybe more for a proper mill, then, you know, this can get you by. Um, you could do the same exact stuff I'm doing here with a file and a little extra elbow grease. I've done that, and I kind of like this way um, because it can get me started off square. You know, if I, if I line up the vise correctly, you put the material in there correctly, you make your lines correctly, and you mill in a straight line, then you can start off your file with just needing to really kind of square the corners up, you know, and, and not do a lot. And, you know, and then I find I don't get impatient with the file and it's more of a finishing tool and not a roughing tool. So, some thoughts there. Uh, I hope you liked it and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks.